Hey y'all, Andrew Reed, Moss Creek Mushrooms. And this lovely creature is Samantha Reed. Hi. My wifey. Hello. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm talking to everybody. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. You go I ahead and talk in the chat. Talking while talking. I'll talk on here. <laughs> Man, I don't know. You guys see this? I mean, look at this. I look fat today. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe it's the one big ass lunch I ate. <laughs> Well, who all we got? Man. Dune! What's up, buddy? Sorry, I need to, like... I said the same thing. <laughs> well, well said. That. Yeah. What's up, James? Oh, I just heard myself. Juggles? Ooh. I hurt my own ears. Speaking too loud. Well, welcome, y'all, to the Mushroom Cast. Today, we're going to do another lab live. Um, I've got the overhead camera set up. You can see it right over there uh those actually are the slants that we did last week during the lab and live you can see that they are actually quite grown in very white um i'll see i'm actually trying to get a closer camera angle this time so you guys just let me know if that's working for you if it's not we'll zoom back out but should be pretty th this should be the best setup to really see what's going on um i have picked out a variety of contaminations for us to work through today and i'm just going to show you how i cut some stuff and how i do some transfers you won't see me using antibiotics you don't see me um, doing anything really other than what what i would like to call mechanical uh pest control which is i like to use grooves in my agar i like to use really hard agar because it's a lot harder for the bacteria to break it all down and um we we know there's sniggering about nothing I was going to drink. I had some anxiety. I was going to drink a thing of coffee, and I well, was it, hoping you wouldn't say anything silly. Oh, she had some. Just, she like, had the anxiety. Spew it out. Okay, I'm sorry. And then you brought attention to it. Thanks. Well, let's let's look how red she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Seth Fisher made it on too. Mike, what's going on, dude? Hey, man, I know it's off topic, but can you send me what lights you use for your grow room? I cannot send it. We cannot do that. Uh, links in the chat. I don't think. I know we can't do it in comments. That's how Eric Myers is first. YouTube channel got shut down and I don't want my YouTube channel shut down I can tell you that they're t5 lights um, we also use some LED lights they are Barina grow lights so you're looking for 6500 Kelvin mushrooms like it a little bit in the bluer spectrum you can use full spectrum lights you can use pretty much anything mushrooms aren't picky now we'll say I like 6500 Kelvin for one reason photography if you're selling mushrooms you want good pictures of mushrooms 6500 Kelvin is a great frequency to take photos out at. That is why I like that. So. I will say that I really like the LED lights. They're very long strip. They're compact and they're up against the ceiling. And the other ones, um, they're hard to clean. They're hard to clean. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I actually dislike the LED for one reason. The frequency at, the, at which they, you know, they actually, the diodes turn on and off, right? The frequency with which they do that, you can't see it with the naked eye, but your camera can see it. So all the time lapses I've done in that room look like crap. So I'm getting, a, I've got a light box with actual photography LEDs, like videography LEDs, and the light box works much better for the time lapses. So that's probably where I'll be doing most of my time lapses from now on. Um, <clears throat> all right. So James said, wow, she gets bright red. <laughs> Like a lobster. <laughs> like a cooked lobster. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, um, seems like we're already, like, swinging. So why don't I transfer over um, to the, sh the overhead cam. Um, I'm trying to get my phone over there because I can't see the chat from, from over here. But we'll do it. If you guys have any contamination questions or any questions about what I'm doing, please ask. Samantha will read them off to me, and I will try to make sure to answer everything to the best of my ability. I am, I would consider myself a journeyman in this. You know, you've got apprentice, journeyman, and master. When it comes to agar work, I would consider myself kind of a journeyman level. I'm better than an apprentice. I am no expert. There are going to be people who are highly trained for this. 
we are actually going through a bunch of interviews. We just finished one right before this. We've got like five or six interviews tomorrow for actual lab technicians. What I'm really hoping is that they'll join me. They'll do the overhead cam, and then I'll be able to speak to you guys and just describe what they are doing and why they are doing it. And, yeah, it'll be really, really fun, I think, to uh, get our lab techs involved in the live streams as well. So with that, take the headset off, go over, and we'll just get into it. Let me switch over to the overhead. Nope, that's Samantha. <laughs> well, let's just pause and look at that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It's off, you know. All right. This is why I'm never on camera, you guys. Hey, listen to this. <laughs> Sound effects. <laughs> A lab ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, that's probably terrible, but okay. Uh, Samantha, can you do me a sound check? Check, check. No, no. Like, can what you are you? Check, can you listen to hear if you can hear me? Oh. So just pull your sound up real quick. Uh, will it not? Will it make issues? <clears throat> not me for a second, it will. Uh, Samantha, can you do me Great. a sound check? Sounds good. That's good. Check, check. I just wanted to make sure people could hear me. Well, not, ooh, let's, you know what, let's get that glove sound effect. Oh, that sounded a little dirty. All right. Here we go again. Are you ready for your checkup? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my mom's going to hate this live stream. <laughs> I'm sorry, Baba. Uh, okay, so these are the slants that we did <clears throat> last week. They have already grown a lot. You can see, where's the one I wrote on? Right there. Snow Goose. Okay, I'm going to be really careful because I cannot see my hands. I mean, I, I can't see the camera. <laughs> Screw this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me mark the table. <laughs> no, what? There. And there. And there and okay now I can see you know what though I'm about to not be able to see <laughs> because there's our paper <laughs> we'll leave that one where I can see it all right HEPA filtered air is coming this way just like last week so remember that if we're doing our normal work making slants and everything right remember we kept all this stuff pointed towards the clean direction of airflow today is going to be a little different because today we're working with contamination when i work with heavy contamination if it's bacterial i work in hepa filtered air if it is mold i do not and i have examples of both today for you so look at those pretty slants one last time look at that man it's already growing right in there and Pack those away. Oh, look at this. I printed that. That's a 3D printed centrifuge tube holder. Very cool, right? I entertain myself. <laughs> All right. Now, this I think it's cool. is the plate of turkey tail that we did last week. You remember I cloned those? You can see right here there is some turkey tail growing. But you can see there's also bacteria in each one of these cuts. Turkey tail was very dirty. So those cuts were actually probably from me not having a clean enough scalpel, truth be told. So there's turkey tail. And then last week we did these. This is the snow goose. There's a contaminated version. Now you see that it's actually growing mycelium on the wedge but there's our three cuts, that little raptor slash that we did last week with the three. This can eventually grow past that bacteria and get to a clean spot where we'll, we'll, we could clone it. We're not going to worry about that because right here we've got that. Though you can see mold contamination. So if I was going to clone this, um, I'm not going to worry about it today because I've got other things that I'm going to show you 
that'll be a little bit better. But that mold, what I would do is I would bring this in and I would work more like this in just still air. So none of this type of filtered air. It would just be still air. You don't want to disturb the plate because you don't want to stir up the mold, right? So we'll move that off to the side as well. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be working with the smaller dishes. See, there's, there's your nice moldy plate of chicken of the woods. Um, so much bigger than these three stacks. I like these little small plates. I hate pouring them, but, but they, uh, they work really, really well. All right, our first transfer. Here's chicken of the woods. Perfectly clean, moldy. I'm gonna carefully flip this over without bumping it. You can see right there, this is the clean side. This is the moldy side. You can even see where the mold is. This is why I love, 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 love. If you even look, this side's lighter. That's why I love food coloring. It shows you the contamination so easy. I know, I know, no professional uses food coloring. That's BS, I do this for a living. I use food coloring. So I am the proof that those people are wrong. Not saying they're idiots. Because I'm the idiot, but. So there's a question. <clears throat> That's good because I'm just rambling. And I figure I'd grab it before I need to go. Yep. Um, is contamination in Master's Mix substrate always visible? No. Contamination is never always visible. <laughs> How can so, you tell the difference between metabolite yellow and contamination yellow? The easiest way to tell about contamination, period, is your nose nose. Okay? When you have a clean culture of something, it has a certain way it smells. Chicken of the Woods smells very different than oysters. Oysters... Every oyster strain smells unique on its own. You learn those sweet smells. Typically, you know, if it's a food fungus that we're going to eat, it's going to smell kind of tasty, right? If it's bacterial and gross and moldy, it's not going to smell so good. I think oysters in general smell very sweet, almost kind of licorice -y Very licorice, kinda. yes. The sweet smelling, I think. <clears throat> so. Also, exception to the rule, in Dune said that you got into 3D printing. How cool is that? Can I am really excited because I never thought that I was a technical person. But Dune, as you and I have discussed, and Yagdrasil and a few others, in the book Dune, you know, that quote, you know, the, what was it that Paul's first education was in learning how to learn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the first thing in that education is believing that you can learn. If you believe you can learn, you can learn anything. And Might then... Be a little slower. What's the recommended size of holes for filter patches for grain jars? Uh, he's been trying uh, a half inch and liking it. Recommended holes for what? Patches for grain jars. For filter patches for grain jars? I don't use filter patches for grain jars. I use syringe filters, and we use the 0.22 micron filters. Thomas said, yes, I made it. <laughs> All right, guys. Hell yeah. All right. Let's get some lab ASMR going. Nice red hot blade. We're going to cool that in the agar. Oh, remind me to put that up to the mic next time, because that sounded delicious. All right, we're going to coat this plate in alcohol. I am not expecting that to sterilize anything. That is sanitizing, but another reason why I use as much alcohol as I do is because a wet surface is not a surface which mold is just flying off of, right? So if it's wet with a sanitizing agent, you're going to be a little bit safer. Now, that said, we're still going to get, have to open this. And we want to do it. Try not to bump it around. That's dripping. Yeah, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. You Drip, drip. Okay. Now, when I open this, you'll see me open it from the chicken of the wood side. This is so that the air currents do not... They've got a little bit of space to travel and slow down before they hit the mold. Mold is still going to be riding in the, the air here, okay? So we're going to lift it. I'm going to make my cut. I'm going to close the lid back, and I'm going to close it. Um, 
this direction, right? Like, pshh, like that. And the reason why I'm going to go that direction is because any currents I'm stirring up, I want to kind of move that direction away from my clean plates. Now, Chicken of the Woods is very, very um, fluffy. I actually don't even like working with Chicken of the, Wo uh, Chicken of the Woods in front of the flow hood because you always end up with like little bits of orange all over you. What? So I will say this. I know that you have focused very close um, because you wanted I, I them to be I can pull it back see. a little bit if you want. I would because okay. it's... I actually told people to, to let me know. The focus is a little wonky whenever you put your hands up in the scalpel. How about that? It's delayed, so you'll have to give me a second. Okay. All right. So anyways... We're going to cut this. Remember, this entire side came out clean when we looked underneath the mycelium. So we're, we, should, we, we should be good there. All right. Mycelium side down if you can. If it's a little off, that's fine. Right in that middle slice. And that way we've got those. So the reason why I was so up, up close, Samantha, is because you can't hardly see that on that dark blue. Yeah. So. All right. More lab ASMR. You might have to get two cameras. One that's... <laughs> and then I just toggle between the two. promised. There, I hope you guys like that. I really endangered that plate to get that sound. I saw you holding your breath. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was lab speak for yes. <laughs> She's learned my lab speak by now. <laughs> One more time. That's a sound effect I need to just capture. Like, I need to spend a day here in the lab just making a bunch of noises and recording the sound so I can use them in later videos. So someone said they have a question. I'm having problems with can contamination and was wondering if a UVC lamp would help with sanitation of my lab space. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> And then this is SAB. So that heard me. Uh, that was me saying I heard the question. Um, one second, and I will answer it. SAB usually stands for a still air box, Samantha. It is not in a still air box. It is completely open air, and uh, Andrew has a, a rig made out of two by fours and a camera right above it. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's redneck, but it works. I mean, it's the got last the camera plates, directly above me. The last plates you did came out clean, didn't they? The last plates? Yeah. Uh, actually, and no. Um, now, that was because I was speaking the whole time. Like, people even said, man, I can't wait to see these plates. They're probably contaminated as heck. Yeah. But, you know. <clears throat> now, uh, real quick. Last week, I said that I always do my new plates first, right, because I'm trying to protect those. This plate's dirty. This plate's filthy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close it up first today. When you're working with contamination, oftentimes the rules are kind of reverse. It's easier to keep something clean than it is to clean it. Now, uh, what was that first question that I said I would answer? Um, I'm having problems with contamination and was wondering if a UVC lamp would help with sanitation of my lab space. Oh, okay, yeah. So... <clears throat> it can help it can definitely help um it is not a sure thing i make sure that anyone who talks about uvc and using it in their open space their lab space like if, if you've got a uvc box right and that uvc box is being used to sterilize surfaces like of your equipment or even clear plates or something like that that's one thing but if you're using UVC in an open area, 
I have seen people use it and go to the hospital and almost blind themselves for life using that stuff. So you need to make sure that you cannot see the UV light. I mean, you're not going to see it, but make sure it can't get to your eyes when you use it. Um, you do not want to permanently damage yourself just to have some sterile cultures. There are easier ways to do it, I promise. I wonder if you could do like a, number one, a timer, maybe at certain intervals. So there are people that do timers. Um, and you can put it over your workbench and you can have it do it like a couple of hours in the middle of the night when you know no one's going to be there. Or do a light switch on the outside of the lab that you can flip off before you and enter. You can do that and then flip it on and like, you know, make sure that you flip the lights on and off before you op even open the door. So whatever way you're going to do it to make sure you just want to make sure you really are careful with that UVC. If you start feeling an itching in your eyes, immediately go to the hospital that means that typically that you've got uv you've got some uvc light damaging your eyes and the damage gets worse for a little bit what matt <laughs> you said how oh, good tristan isn't on this episode oh gosh oh <laughs> you know my the last episode there was no michael myers and i really missed that visit i never I, you know I, I never thought that i would but it was like it's become such a tradition i just feel bad so Samuel said that he heard the snare on Closer by Nine Inch Nails is actually a recording of a cigarette being put out in some water. So we oh. should make some recordings. Oh, my them. gosh. I have Fruity Loops. I could make Do it. Mushroom Lab music. Do it. And then you can make a whole playlist. And Speaking of, guys, <laughs> I, I know we don't have too many people on this, so it's not giving much away. I really I don't know if anybody ever saw that. Um, oh, no. I don't know if anyone ever saw the... Uh, G.I. Joe uh, trailer way back when that was the Cobra recruitment video. <laughs> but it was like, we're people of honor. We're, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it was like Cobra. And I'm like, man, I want to do something like that for the Mossback Syndicate. And then I also want to do a villain, but I'm not very good at a villain voice. Hey, guys, tell me how this works. They said, they decide, no, you know, hold on, let me reset. I can't do this shit. They wanted to keep the mushrooms for themselves. But the Mossback Syndicate said no. <laughs> Look at that. She can't even help herself. I'm make, making a face. All right. So there's Chicken of the Woods. This is a wild clone that we've done, uh, that we've gotten from the local woods here. Uh, ben Erickson found it. That plate that you saw, these are the only two plates that have ever existed of this strain until today. And now there are five plates. And we're trying to save this strain. As dirty as it was. All right. We'll get another three out. Three clean dishes. Set them aside for the moment. And I'm going to show you um, what dirty liquid culture looks like, but it's going to be easier to show you. Um, contaminated liquid culture, I mean. It's going to be easier to show you that um, in syringe. Um, Samuel has asked, uh, will a, a UVC light in your fogger make it blow sterile air? And it won't make it sterile air um, if your air is moving through at any kind of pace. <clears throat> and then Infinite Gabe uh, has asked, he was wondering where we get our hardwood pellets from and if we have any tips on growing lion's mane from agar. Um, grow it in liquid culture because lion's mane always 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 wants to fruit when it's on agar and liquid culture keeps it chopped up keeps it growing really easy so the truth is no i don't have a lot of good resources for you for growing it on agar because i try to stay away from agar as much as i can nowadays and look and the uh, lion's mane from what i understand it's very hormone based when it fruits and so it's flooded an area with hormones. Those hormones are telling it to fruit, 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 fruit. When you transfer to agar, it ends up like still saying fruit, 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 fruit. So it's easier to clone lion's mane mycelium than it is to clone lion's mane fruit because of those hormones. Now the other side of it, it's kind of like rooting hormone for plants, right? When you clone something, you dip it in rooting hormone to make it want to produce roots in that area. 
And we get our substrate from Seth Fisher from Mushroom Media Online. Yes. Um, and we really like Seth. He's he's upfront and honest. Don't tell him that. He's here. Oh, is he? He was in the chat earlier. Oh, he was. I said hi. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> we can't let him know that we like him. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. <clears throat> see if I can... I really like how brutally honest he is. <laughs> I mean, he said he's a mass hole. <laughs> All right. Samantha, I don't know how well people can see that because I can't see anything right from here. But it should look kind of milky. That syringe. It is not clear. There are not good floating bits of visible mycelium. Now, just to show you, I'll pull some, uh, I'll pull a liquid syringe from an obviously good. This is an obviously, ah, obviously good jar. See that color? I love amber colored. I will not mess with clear liquid culture. I don't like clear liquid culture. I think it's not as nutritious. And everyone's worried about caramelization of sugars. But we caramelize our sugars on purpose. Makes it harder for bacteria to eat. Now. I gotta go. All right, baby. I love you. I'll see you later. Love you. All right, guys. It's just you and me now. So I'm going to try to keep a look on the chat. I got to look that way for the chat. This right here to see all this. And then I got to look that way to see what I'm doing. So it's going to be a little hard, but... Dog, that's enough. Psst, no, dog. All right. Michael Locos, what YouTube channel, by the way? He hooks. Oh yeah, I was I was totally listening to him the other day. Um, the first ones he's done, I've really hated. I thought the mushrooms sounded ugly. But uh, some of the newer ones that he's done has been much, much more, you know, a little easier on the ears. Now you can see we got a little bit of floating bits in this jar. And I'm pumping my syringe right now, kicking everything up off the bottom, and then pulling and trying to really get visible chunks of mycelium here. One sec. All right. Move that back over there. And here we go. Okay, I think I can see that from the computer screen on the other side there. There are bits floating around. Let me in fact see if I can Yeah, you see that right there? Little chunks. That is visible mycelium. And that's what you're looking for, right? And you notice how kind of clear that is. Like if I put my scalpel underneath, see how we can see that scalpel really easy? If I do that with this other syringe, no visible chunks of mycelium. It's rather milky looking. A little lighter too. See, that's one of the reasons why I don't trust it. There is, see how that's milky on that one right there? Oh my goodness, where did Smith leave her phone? Sorry about that guys, that, I, can't, I don't know where Samantha's phone is. Um, that's probably my daughter calling Samantha and saying, hey, we're home, why haven't you picked us up yet? So, all right. Now, what we're doing here, we're gonna take these, I'm just gonna show you guys this. <clears throat> this, that's gonna drive me crazy. One second.
Okay, found it. Now I can stop it if necessary. All right, guys. Uh, were you looking for, were you coming here to help me? I found it. Thank you, Jack. All right, so this is Dirty Liquid Culture. Um, we're going to take this. This is how you test liquid culture. It is very simple. You just take your liquid culture that you're wanting to test, and you put... That is way too much. A couple of drops is what I was trying to do, so obviously that one didn't work out as well. Take that, and now this will be drop. I think that's all you need, a couple of drops. And all we'll do is we'll parafilm those back up. Now, I'm going to get about guarantee you that next week when we come back to check these, they're going to be very bacterial. Okay? Um, when you have milky looking liquid culture, it is almost always because of uh, bacteria. My phone will not let me come through the chat on you guys, for you guys. It is very irritating to not be able to see the chat. Anyways, let's pair on this. These technical difficulties are driving me crazy. All right, pair film up. Oh, you can see I tore my glove. That's not ideal either. But there's that. And this. Now, double my eight, my uh, parafilm by folding it over on each other and then we're just going to keep stretching it until it wraps and it wraps forever on these small dishes I actually just dumped one of my lion's mane jars into a bag of sub because it looked like the good jar you just showed well just thought maybe there's some good in it so that's actually not a bad thing um that was actually something I'm going to talk about. If you have a dirty liquid culture that you think is dirty, um, but has visible mycelium in it, sometimes a good way to save it is to inject liquid culture into straw or sawdust that has been sterilized. Um, if it's sawdust, you're going to, have to put some some other nutrients in there, like a few grains or something, just to get a foothold. But what you do is you inject that into the, the sawdust and it allows for <clears throat> growth of the mycelium away from bacteria. Bacteria does not grow very quickly on straw. Mycelium does. And so the mycelium can outcompete, and then you can clone a mushroom from that transfer and save that strain. So that's a good way to save strains if you've got liquid culture that, you, uh, that you're looking to uh, save, right? Like, oh, I don't have any backups of this yet. I need to... Uh, make sure that I, I get this saved because I just bought, you know, a $30 syringe or something. I don't know. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to go back to scalpel transfers real quick. I'm going to show you on the turkey tail how I do a bacteria-ridden transfer. Turkey tail is always very hard to clone. There's very little sterile area to actually get to. Um, here is our turkey tail dish. You can see the growth there. Very light, very faint. Grab my scalpel. We'll go ahead and open this dish now. I'm not being as careful with this dish um, as I was the mold one, because this one is bacterial. Um, 
if I saw water rolling around inside my dish, I might be a little bit more careful because you don't want water picking up your bacteria and just spreading it around. Where is the leading edge? I'll screw it. We'll cheat and we'll make our own leading edge right there. Well, even the cheating didn't work, huh? There we go. All right. Going after that little bit of clean. Let's see. Right. Okay. Bacteria all along there. See, it looks greasy, wet. That's greasy. That might actually be yeast right there. Cool thing with that is you can take that, put that in a little bit of liquid culture, like just dob that up with a syringe, put that in a liquid culture, and if it's yeast, you'll it, your liquid culture will smell like, like beer. And if it smells like beer, then you know you got yeast. And now you've got novel yeasts that you can grow out for brewing. I plan on doing videos about this in the future. Okay. Clean scalpel, go right here to the leading edge of that mycelium where there is no bacteria. And I'm just gonna cut a small piece out. You don't need much. All you need is the genetic information. It'll replicate itself. We take it here and we place it blade side down, right on that center cut. As it grows over, see how this grew out of that cut, but that cut is bacteria feel filled. It's slow, it's slowing that bacteria down so that we can transfer much quicker. A little more ASMR there for you. Sometimes I like the noises that come out of the labs. I'm cutting again, a very small little piece. This is why I use twice as much agar as normal. I don't. I use 20 grams per 500 milliliters. I want my agar to break off into shards really easily and to stick. It's very sticky. It's also harder to eat. The, the, I, 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 I know people think I'm crazy, but having twice as much agar, the bacteria is slowed down. Mycelium is really good at penetrating very hard surfaces. Um, bacteria is not. Bacteria has to eat where it lays. So by making a very hard agar, we are able to help rob or at least slow down the bacteria a little bit. And then with the cuts, we're doing a me mechanical almost filtration of a type where the bacteria goes into that gap, grows, and that has to work to get back out on the other side. See how that's on the other side? But look, that turkey tail is already out here. Now, if this cut was clean, which looks like it mostly is, except for the yeast down there, if this continued to grow, it would grow past that cut, and we, I would select over here. But that's how I would—that's how I save most strains from bacterial contamination or yeast contamination, right there. So, very, very easy. Nothing, you know, nothing really to it. Cut our parafilm. Now, if anybody's got any questions about the bacteria uh, transfers, I'm happy to answer it. Or the mold earlier from the chicken of the woods. Um, that chicken of the woods, I am wanting to go back. I used to grow chicken of the woods indoors, and I'm wanting to do some videos on it. And I would like to grow chicken of the woods. I think that would be very cool to have in a domestic American year round supply. Of chicken of the woods and I know it can grow because we used to grow it on our wheat bran mix and it didn't do all that well but I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna do very well on the goat mix but something else that we found back out in the day all the commercial mushroom growers who were doing this back when CMGN was full of innovation was 
that uh, wild genetics. Actually, a guy named Peter Drake was the guy who taught me that, that his wild genetic lines did much better, and he traded me some strains, and they did do way better than anything I got from Aloha or my son Emporium or anywhere else. I think that just the closer it is to being fresh from the wild, the sturdier it is, which may mean that it's a type of mushroom that really needs regular spore collection and strain resets to make it a viable, a viable way to go. Chain of the Woods was good stuff, too. All right. Oh, Dune. I'm sorry I missed you, man. Maybe if you come back and you see this, you'll uh, hear me say goodbye. Uh, let, 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 them, let them out of the room, will you? Then go play with the kids. Um, Samantha, I'm not sure. I think my chat may have actually stalled out. Yeah, so I've just been talking. Samantha's back already. The joys of living four minutes from work. <laughs> Can't wait to see how well that goes. What about, oh, like morels? So from what I've heard about morels, most people that have, people have successfully grown them indoors. A guy named Midnight Harvest on Instagram is working on it. Um, I mean, I think that's the name of his mushroom company, period. Midnight Harvest has gotten morels to fruit and plates, so it's very, very likely that he's got some good stuff going on. The only issue that I have seen so far with morel cultivation is that usually it costs more to make them fruit, and you're not even fruiting the best kinds of morels anyways, um, that it's not worth it, so. He couldn't even see you wrap that dish. Oh yeah? Um, okay, let's see. So we got some super stripe here. Speaking of, what's up, Michael? How are you doing today? Good day at work. Killed anybody? No? Killed it. Killed it? He killed it? Ah, oh, that's good. <laughs> well, that's fair. Are you planning on killing someone later? Yeah, okay. Just like, you know, an after work snack or something. Oh, fair enough. Well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> well, bye, Maiko. Thanks for joining us. All right. I'm trying to think if there's anything I haven't gone through that I already have planned. We had uh, contaminated liquid culture. We have. Um, we've done our turkey tail transfers that we did the clone from last week. Um, oh, I, I, actually, I tell you what, somebody put it in the chat. If you would, I'm gonna give you a few minutes, but if you would like for me, I've got a mushroom I can clone that's a false turkey tail, and I've been wanting to collect for bio um, material research. I'll clone it right here in front of you guys if that's what you want. So just let me know. Otherwise, we'll just talk. T side said morals. Yeah, I used to have this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never had morals, but morels. No, I'm just playing. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, so Village has asked, what would be your substrate mix for Chicken of the Woods? Uh, the goat mix is what I would go with. Oh, you don't need to see my coffee. Um, the goat mix is what I would try with first. I think that that's going to be a, a ready food source for it. Um, I'll also try the master's mix to begin with. So... You all right there, baby? <clears throat> yep. Well, okay. So on that plate, mm -hmm. this is my question out of curiosity. Yeah. It seems like it's receding from the outer part of the plate. This right here? Like. Yes. Um, it looks like the food coloring's changed. Okay. On the outer edge, or? The outer edge, yeah. So that outer edge, that's bacteria. Oh. Yeah. Um, That's fun. This other plate has it, too. Um, in fact, it's a little easier to see. It's a little bit lighter right there. Uh, everywhere I go, there's a reflective light. Too many lights in the studio. Well, okay. This is, I believe, 
liquid culture tests. But it's liquid culture tests on bad plates. If it was if it was the liquid culture that was bad, you would see it mixed in with the mycelium. It being on the outer edges tells me one of two things. Either my HEPA filtered air where we did this is dirty, which I don't think so. Or my agar didn't cook well enough and bacteria tends to spread along the slick surface of the outsides very easily due to condensation. Um, these look like dirty plates from uh, a bad cook to me. And we've actually had a little bit of trouble with our All-American recently where it does not want to be producing... like it, it, Our 15 PSI on the gauge is not 15 PSI right now. So we are actively... Uh, working on calibrating one of ours at the moment. So one more UV question. Yeah. Does adding UV lights to a grow room help at all? I wouldn't do it to your grow room, no. Would that damage the mushrooms? It would damage the mushrooms. It'll mutate them. Now, if you want to use UVC to mutate mushrooms, <laughs> you actually want to <laughs> mutate the germ cell line. A germ cell is your reproductive cell. So in humans, it's sperm and eggs, sperm and ovum. Um, in, in all mammals, I guess. Uh, and in funguses, it tends to be spores, and bacteria it tends to be endospores. So, but what you do is you'll take those spores and you can um, uh, subject them to UVC light for less than 30 seconds. I do like five seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. In fact, I would do it at different intervals for the spore print. So get yourself a little cell phone cleaner, little uh, cell phone UV light. Put your spore plate or spore print in there. Run it for five or 10 seconds then played it out those spores. Um, and the patrons only live streams, we're actually going to be going over breeding very soon. And we'll be going over different mutagens as well. There's actually a dry ice mutagen that uh, the guy who runs Experimico Reddit was telling me about and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll be going over even some more in-depth lab work and mushroom breeding on the patrons only live streams. But you can absolutely do mutations do that. But that's why you wouldn't want to do it in the grow room. And then Aiden has asked, um, did you ever think about reusing Petri dishes to save on plastic waste? Yes. And you know what? Let me just transfer back to the other camera since I'm not going to be doing any more right here. And I'll answer that. I know we uh, we watched someone on YouTube not that long ago that were she, uh, she was using glass Petri dishes and the way she was throwing those things around... <laughs> I thought for sure they would shatter, but they didn't. Yeah, she was just kind of straight up <clears throat> tossing them. And she'd clean them out. She'd take a you know a blade and just kind of stick it into the agar and flick it out like a pancake. Like it was just <laughs> it was pretty neat. It was very fast, very efficient. Um, she caught that. <laughs> I dodged it instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's goodness. impossible to work with me, guys. <laughs> you know, when we're hiring the lab techs, I've actually been telling every single technician, you have to work closely with me, and that's going to be a problem for you. So, um, okay, I'm back over here. What am I answering? Um, Did you ever think about using reusing Petri dishes? Yes, okay. We have plastic ones. I don't I actually bought, um, when the shortages and stuff started happening, I bought like 200 class dishes. We have them. What we started doing was mi pre-mixing our agar, and then pouring it into the plates and then stacking the glass plates in unicorn bags, sealing them, and then <clears throat> cooking them in the pressure cooker like normal. So like an hour at 15 PSI or something like that. Pull them out, you only need to you know open the unicorn bag, grab your plates, reseal it, and then just leave your plates as is. Then you've got reusable plates. If you're wanting to reuse the plastic ones, you gotta get polypropylene because Polyethylene, unless you, well, you could wash it completely clear and then probably put them in bags and UV light treat them. Like put them under so Lars UV said light for about an hour. That's what he used to do, worked fine. In fact, you can pour agar in a dirty environment and then clean them in the UV UVC light before you use them. Yeah, you could. You could do that, actually. Um, we never really did that. Like when I was in college, which, I mean, I was only in for like a year and only took one biology class. So I was literally just introduced to it, but we did all of our work open air. Um, and they did use UV light pretty extensively for a lot of different things, not for our dishes. Um, I think that, that, that was where I learned how to sterilize agar in a microwave. You remember when I first started growing mushrooms at home, how I'd sterilize in a microwave? 
put your uh, didn't you explode someone <laughs> well so one time so you're only supposed to let it go for like 15 seconds okay <laughs> you put it you pour your you pour your dish you put it in the microwave for about 15 seconds with the lid off because um, otherwise you'll melt your lid but you just put them both you know agar plate take your lid off put it face up microwave for about 15 seconds and then I would do like a bleach bomb in front of the microwave, slowly open it because you don't want air rushing in and dirty in your plate, put the lid on, let it cool, and then you're ready to go. That's not the cleanest way to go. It's not the best way to go, but it's the way we did it in college. So just microwave it for like 15 seconds. Seemed to kill everything. Not my favorite way to go, as I now use autoclaves, because those are more sh of a sure thing. Well, it's 421, and y'all know what that means. It's only nine minutes till the show's over. <laughs> a disappointer on a daily basis. That's not true. <laughs> not at all. Uh, Aiden said that he also started using the microwave for his agar. Yeah, that, that was how I started. Like, that's that's the way a lot of people have started, from what I understand. It's slow, because you can only do one dish at a time. You know, I can do... A hundred dishes worth of agar in five hundred and thousand milliliter flasks in an all American seventy five X. So it's it's very different. In that same hour, I can microwave, you know, a few dishes, like maybe twenty if I'm lucky. You know, I can do a hundred in that same hour. With that, guys, we're about to sign off. So uh, if you have any more questions, better throw them in quick because. When it comes to 4.30, we'll be jumping off because I've got to start lining up interviews for tomorrow and tell the crew, bye, you know, kiss them on their cheeks and tell them goodnight, tuck them in. I am in rare form the past couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on. I feel fight and fit, even though I'm not. You're, you're reading, but not reading anything to me. Is there nothing to read to me? I was just watching your facial features on the... <laughs> While watching I should have just like... Features. I should have just like... <laughs> change the mic the camera angle over so you could see her just sitting there like you know she was all <laughs> just staring uh i'm tired today I'm i sorry. just started using fresh sawdust from a local hardwood sawmill inoculate my first bags to try been three days looking promising have you ever tried that i do use the sawdust with soy hole pellets um <laughs> i have used it are you are you saying you used fresh like you didn't you didn't uh clean it sterilize it at all uh, I have done that, and it had very mixed results. Worked when it worked, and mostly didn't. And I never did like that. I don't like. I like it to have some consistency. If, uh, but you can absolutely use fresh sawdust, and then just autoclave it and use it. Uh, what Brian at What the Fungus uses chips. I've thought about calling the city and having them dump wood chips here and having a free substrate. The only problem is, is that free is not free. It would actually be more expensive to get free substrate and then pay my guys to shovel that into bags whenever I can buy substrate in and then just they spend no time putting it together and through Thor. So, you know, labor is always the biggest expense and I'm lazy. So labor is always my biggest expense. And so I don't go for free very often. So Daniel has asked any experience fruiting hens, any tips? I got some tips. I don't know fruiting, if I want to share them. Fruiting hens from... from uh, <clears throat> okay. If you want traditional-looking maitake... <clears throat> excuse me. Traditional-looking hen of the woods, go watch T.R. Davis's video. Uh, Earth Angel Mushrooms is his YouTube channel. He just put out a video recently about his tips for fruiting maitake. And it's probably the best treatise on maitake that's been shared. Like, out, out in the open. It's an excellent video. Um, the way I do my taki is a little bit different. We grow my taki. We never open the bag. We fruit it in the bag in vitro. And then as it fruits, it creates these clubs, right? It, it grows. It doesn't frond out. So instead of shelves, you have like these fingers that grow in. And it grows to the top of the bag and then just fills the whole thing. They kind of look like antlers. They look like antlers. Yeah. And so... Even sort of velvety too, aren't they? They are, which is why we call that mushroom... The antler velvet mushroom. <laughs> we people we, we asked our chefs, you know, like, oh, you want my taki? No, I don't need any my taki. I get it from so and so. How about antler velvet mushrooms? You need those. What are those? Well, you know, they're only really rare, and we sell them for 160 a case, double our oyster prices. 
And you know what? We sold them. They freaking loved them. We still get calls about our antler velvet mushrooms. And I'm like, oh, crap. It takes me like six months <laughs> to incubate those <laughs> and grow them out. But it's a great mushroom. And it actually is unique. And it's, you know, we were the only place that you could get it. I think other people are starting to do that now that I've been telling our mentorships about it. But it's a good way to go. The antler velvet changes everything. And they are very velvety, very antler looking, and they have a completely different texture. It's amazing. So Aiden's asked, are you planning to upload videos about breeding mushrooms to YouTube or Patreon exclusively? And then he also said later, you know, Fresh from the Farm uh, is the only one I know on YouTube who goes into deep, or uh, goes in deep into <laughs> breeding. Um, on YouTube, yeah, he's probably the most, most in depth right now. I don't breed mushrooms like he does. Um, I was planning on sharing that very openly to begin with, but whenever I figured out that it's actually a pretty unique way of doing it and way cheaper and easier, I decided to sit back on it a little bit. Um, I do share it. If you, if you pay me to teach you, you learn everything I know for free right now. It's, you know, I share information as I feel that it is proven. Um, and I share how to grow and do everything else, but I am slow on the breeding side because that's where my bread and butter is right now. So I'm a little slower on that, though I do share it pretty openly. I do plan on uh, sharing that information in a YouTube video wide open, but I want my students and my mentorships who are paying me for my information to have benefits from that first because they're paying for it. And so what it comes down to is, yeah, if you hire me for a mentorship, a consultation, I'll tell you everything you want to know about it. If you are on the Patreon, we will have exclusive videos on that as well, unlisted on YouTube that you can't go to unless you have that link. And we will get more in depth than that because people are getting into, they, they're actually going the evolution pit tier. You know, people are actually working towards breeding. It's creating a network and it's a good way to weed out people who are non-serious. So that's, <clears throat> and if that makes me a dirty capitalist, I guess that makes me a dirty capitalist. I don't know. <laughs> But well, uh, for me, you're going into a lot. Um, right. You know, and that's worth taking time to do. And I think having that support to take the time you know, to do it right. You know, not saying that you wouldn't do it right. <laughs> but, right. You know. Oh, I got you. I don't know. Uh, and, and to answer Joe, how often do we do the live broadcasts? We do the Patreon exclusively on Monday. Um, on Wednesday, uh, we do we the do open, general yeah. open, and then on Friday as well, we do a general kind of a YouTube video. We, that we is do Friday video. <coughs> yeah. We don't do a live stream <coughs> on, on That's Friday. That's right. Right. On Friday, we produce the YouTube video and have it published. Right. And then starting this week, Patreon um, patrons on, on our Patreon get exclusive behind the scenes videos that go up. Um, it's not going to be about the topic or anything else, but it is basically like if people want to know what does it look like when Tristan and Matt are, you know, wearing masks and eating rotten mushrooms in the grow room. I'm just playing, you know, <laughs> just little funny things that happen across the farm. We just did an updated farm tour. Um, you know, we'll be working into more topical videos like the breeding video and things for that. That's for the Patreon. But those those go out. Usually our plan will be every Tuesday. So, you know, we're getting close to getting content out five days, a, five days a week. And honestly, I would really love to work on educational materials. I, I, Andrew and I have talked on multiple occasions of doing animated videos that are educational and kind of, you know, live action sort of videos uh, mm. going through kind of the breeding program for one, but also just how things kind of replicate and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And grow. Well, and one of the things I want, I, so the breeding video to me is such a passion that I want this video to be awesome. So part of me is like, you know, Samantha's learning illustration. And when she gets into animation, you know, I want, I want like illustrated works of how of protoplasm exchange, you know, like I want like to be able to do illustrations of fusion, cell fusion and things like that. Like I want, I don't want to just be like, here's how I breed, you know, I want to actually go through, these are how mushrooms breed and every mushroom, every species has its own strategy, right? And some of them are compatible with each other. Some of them are not. Here's how we get around some certain things. 
certain spore, certain mushrooms are haploid producers of spores, which means that they carry half the genetic information need, necessary to produce, create a full organism, a r- organism capable of reproduction. Uh, I think it's agaricus mushrooms and uh, black poplar mushrooms and uh, chestnuts, the fialotas, that are tetraploid. And only maybe 1.001% or something like that of their spores are haploid. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, going, it's definitely one of those things where, <coughs> excuse me, where you got to learn how each species breeds, which is why right now we're working on oysters. But once I get the, the evolution pit tier network set up, I'll be sharing how we breed oysters. And then that's because we're getting into herisiums and shiitakes and everything else. And so I always want to be one step ahead of what I'm teaching <laughs> because I want to have proven the practice. So Joe said he was in Knoxville and he will be paying us a visit. I told him he was more than welcome to come down. Absolutely. Um, Very welcome. We're open eight to five. as meant to sit on there. So wait, what about the mentorship? Uh, so you'd love to take our course. Oh, that was a uh, killer the cougar. Online or in person. Um, yeah, so it's week long. Our, so real quick, yeah, I'll, I'll go into that. You can do a consultation. That's usually over the phone. We can also do it, you know, face to face online. It's two hundred dollars an hour. That's um, you can buy it in three hour increments or one hour increments. I usually suggest at these days most people don't need three hours. You need one hour typically because you've seen my videos. If you've seen I my videos, was asking about the mentorship. That, <laughs> Uh, Sorry. Well, she said, I only live about 400 miles from you, West Tennessee, here. I would love to take your course online or in person. So mentorship is in person. We do it for a week. You pay, come out here. It's a 1000 for for if you're coming to you would learn everything that you want to learn. You tell us what you want. We go over what you want. If you want the whole kit and caboodle, we go over the whole kit and caboodle. It's fast. A lot of times people are like the first day. A lot of times people are like, I've got too much information in my head. So bring your recording device. Um, That said, uh, it's if you want to bring a person with you, we have a plus one option. Um, It's only 500 bucks to bring a a plus one with you. So 1500 bucks. It's you and a plus one. You can bring your yourself, your business partner, your husband, wife, you know, whatever. It's fine. Whoever you want learning those mushrooms. And, it makes the, you know, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to learn when you've got two people to bounce ideas off of. But yeah, that's what we offer. The mentorship program is by far my favorite. It's where we get to go in depth into everything. Every mentor that comes through this place, unless they specifically tell me, I don't care about learning how to breed mushrooms. I teach them how to breed mushrooms. So that's always Friday material. About the last thing you learn before you leave here. So Joe said that his wife's a quilter and there's a quilter shop near Walmart. Oh, yeah, Walmart. That, that quilter shop is exactly next door to my father's insurance <laughs> oh, agency. <it's> yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you, Flomo. Greetings to Austria from East Tennessee. Um, there he is. It's right next to A-plus Auto and Home. Yeah, that's my father's business. If you need insurance in the state of Tennessee, A-plus Auto and Home. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, it is now four minutes past due. I appreciate every one of your questions and the contributions that you've all made. And, uh, yeah, let's keep doing this. I love this. Um, If you're watching this after it's live, put in the comments what you think some of our next topics should be. I would love to do live topics where you can see it and ask me questions in real time. So with that, y'all, keep smiling cold.